This is my new house Epion that we built for May 2023. It was a show bike and I've been riding it around for the past year, probably two or three times per week. I have some thoughts to share with you guys. And the main conclusion, show bikes suck. Last year, Nick and I, <coughs> mostly Nick, built the Epion as an all road bike for Made. It's hard to believe, but we were still in our old tiny shop in Nevada, California. So what's the difference between an all road bike and a gravel bike? I think the biggest mistake people make when designing bikes is feature creep. Adding more tire clearance, lengthening the wheelbase, throwing in rack mounts, and suddenly your gravel bike is slow and heavy. At that point, you're better off riding a mountain bike. What people consider gravel also varies so much. Some think of it as smooth dirt roads, while others picture rutted fire roads. When I design a bike, I set clear boundaries to avoid scope creep. For an all-road bike, I think of it as 70% road, 30% gravel. It has clearance for 700 by 38 millimeter tires max and accommodates road Q factors and two bike crank sets. This keeps the bike fast and nimble on the road while still being capable on smooth dirt. If you push it too hard, you're gonna be popping tires left and right. After a year riding this bike in all sorts of conditions and locations, I formed my opinion. The all-road bike isn't a great gravel bike. It lacks the gearing and durability to handle serious off-road riding. For the road, I personally prefer the speed and precision of a pure road bike. But all-road bikes are still a joy to own. They're great for social rides, casual spins, exploring random paths, and it's nice to have the efficiency of a road bike without constantly worrying about every crack or bump in the road. The added durability and comfort are also a bonus. In San Francisco, with its mix of urban streets and random off the beaten paths, the all road bike is perfect. In other places, you don't even need to take it off road. I think it would be an excellent commuter with fast chubby slicks or the ideal bike for grabbing coffee or hanging out with friends. But for long road rides over three hours, I'd still reach for my road bike. So what does a show bike look like after a year of riding? Here's my bike check. The standout feature of this all-road Epion is its titanium frame with 3D printed dropouts. This all-road bike was designed for 700 by 38 tires and road Q-factor and cranks. We achieved that by 3D printing a yoke to clear both the chainring and the tire. There's also my signature Y-yoke design. The geometry is more road oriented with 62 millimeters of trail and a short wheelbase. The stack and reach are also more relaxed than a pure road bike, offering a comfortable position for long rides. My favorite part of the build, and the thing I get the most compliments on, is the limited edition Silver GRX group set. Come on Shimano, give the people what they want, Silver Mechanical Drivetrains. Leave a comment below and I will send it to my Shimano rep, Willy. I also prefer using road pedals and shoes on this bike. They're lighter, more comfortable and road setups have lower stack height than mountain bike setups, giving me a smoother, more efficient pedal stroke. Another thing I love about this bike is the internally routed cables and brake lines. They enter through a cool 3D printed port and exit out the dropout. The port flares on the inside, funneling the cables through tightly so there's no rattle inside the frame. A lot of high-end custom bikes now feature wireless electronic group sets and fully internal routing. And I'll let you guys on a little secret. Fully internal cable routing is easier to build and more profitable to sell. Despite that, we are fully committed to mechanical drivetrains. That's why Nick and I spend so much effort to make the cable routing look nice and easy to work on. Finally, I also really like these Astro Luna wheels. They are super fast and have a 25 millimeter internal width, which is ideal for an all road bike. The hubs are made by White Industries. That's why they sound so expensive. So why do show bikes kind of suck? When you build a show bike, you have to think about how it's gonna be photographed and received by the public and media. You need to show off your fanciest designs, highest spec build kits, and the most aggressive saddle to bar drop to assert dominance to one up everyone else. Show bikes are not real bikes. Real bikes are meant to be ridden. My first complaint about this bike, how expensive the dropouts were. For May last year, we wanted to show off our design skills with full 3D printed dropouts. They look really cool and sped up the construction process quite a bit. I'm happy with how they turned out. However, when riding, you can't feel the difference. You can't even see them either. That's why we revised the Epion to have a machined UDH dropout. 
My second complaint is how impractical the finish is. We went with an anodized finish because it is higher contrast and would show up better in photos. However, the anodizing isn't as durable as I would like. I hung some Christmas lights on my bike over the winter and the finish rubbed away in some spots. Anodized finishes are only 30 to 50 nanometers thick. That's why they're not that durable. The anodizing looks really cool, but personally, I would prefer a raw titanium or Cerakoted finish. We did internal cable routing on this bike because it looks a lot better. However, for my personal bikes, I would have preferred the bike to be externally routed. It looks really cool when it's internally routed, but I know when I have to replace the housing, it's going to be a really big headache. On our new house mountain bikes, Nick and I use cable clips, which look great and are utilitarian. And that's probably what I would have gone with on this build. Honestly, I guess it's not that big of a deal. I'm still able to change the spacers and stem really easily, and I haven't had to do any maintenance on this bike. And finally, this is a really amazing bike with some really cool parts. I get compliments and head turns all the time. But personally, I wish it were a little more low-key. Then I wouldn't feel so bad leaving it filthy all the time. So, where do we go from here? If you watched my previous video, you will see that the new version of the Epion went full gravel with clearance for 700 by 47 millimeter tires. Newhouse is more rooted in off-road riding, so we thought a bigger tire is a better fit for the brand. Plus, I wasn't too happy with the durability of smaller tires. Anyways, thanks for watching. That's my show bike from last year. We blinged it out, which makes it a little bit more difficult to own. Regardless, it brings me a lot of joy when I ride it. I think this bike would make a lot more sense as a lower cost, utilitarian, steel, artifact all-road bike. That's probably what I'm going to build next. If you made it this far, I really appreciate it. If you want to support what I do, all you need to do is subscribe to the channel. That really helps promote my videos to the algorithm. Thanks.